Hey guys, Jay! Welcome back to the channel. So, guys, today was day one of New York Comic Con 2022. And guys, thanks to some generous folks who were at the show today on Facebook and, of course, on YouTube, we get to take a look at some sneak peeks of what was released today, and I'm super excited to find out what this is all about and what was revealed at New York Comic Con day one. So guys, without further ado, let's take a deep dive into this, but... If you enjoy this type of content, guys, please do consider subscribing to the channel. I post up to two episodes a week, and I hope you guys will enjoy. And don't forget to hit that bell notification so you guys will always know when new episodes are posted. Well, guys, without further ado, let's take a deep dive into this and see what happened at New York Comic Con Day 1. This is going to be part one of a number of different videos showcasing what was revealed today. Let's have a look. So guys, these photographs come courtesy of the Stateoverse is now. And honestly... I was surfing around on uh, Facebook and uh, I saw a lot of these pictures that were coming on, on this uh, on this channel's feed. Definitely give these guys a like and a follow. Tell them that Jay sent you. Um, also, wanted to give a huge shout out to Robbed Toys on Instagram. A lot of these photos come from him as a score as a correspondent for State Overse. They're great guys. They're doing amazing coverage of the actual New York Comic Con event. Guys, without further ado, let's dive into this and see exactly what's happening today at New York Comic Con. Oh boy, here we go guys, a big hitter right off the bat. Take a look, <laughs> hey! Yes, 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 yes indeed. Uh, huge credit goes to New York Comic Con correspondent Tiso Vin. So Vin wasted no time and headed straight for the Super 7 booth. Guys, I see some Silver Hawks. Let's take a quick look at these. Oh my gosh, guys, this is going to be great. There he is. There is Quicksilver. Now, uh, Quicksilver was already featured on uh, Shardimus Prime's channel. I believe uh, Brian Flynn and him had an interview, and it was, it was freaking amazing. Let's have a closer look at Quicksilver here, guys. Wow. Now, I'm not sure there's enough paint on this particular version of, of Quicksilver. The face here looks really flat. I don't see any real details in that face. Um, so I'm hoping that these are still just a, you know, early prototypes that, uh, the, and I'm pretty sure these are not production, production versions of the characters. We can still see some, yeah, some very soft, uh, damage on certain parts of the, uh, the figure and some paint is actually coming off that we can see here. Having said that, the paint is, uh, exactly as advertised, it's very flat. Uh, although if we do take a closer look, we can see much like what Shardam's Prime had said on his video that there is like some, you know, airbrushing in in and around the um, the musculature to give it a little bit more umph, you know, some more definition. So that I'm I'm really liking that. Uh, they definitely need to work on the face though. It is very very flat, and uh, uh, this face isn't isn't very interesting at all. To be perfectly honest with you, um, you know, if if this is the way it it's actually looks in the package, I would be somewhat disappointed. To be you know, uh, all things being equal, I love the um, the controller um, wristband that he has for Tallyhawk. And he does look like he literally jumped off of the cartoon screen, except that he's more matte than he is silver, unfortunately. Here we have uh, Tally Hawk with his wings spread wide, and of course his talons bare. We also have Tally Hawk here in a resting state. Beautiful. I love the fact that there we, uh, I believe, I guess it is two different Tally Hawks included with Quicksilver. That's amazing. Here we have the. Uh, additional arms, which of course are the winged arms, and yeah, we can see that a lot of paint is coming off of here too. Uh, it's interesting to see the actual molding process here. It literally looks like it's attached to the arm itself. Very, very cool. And we can see some overspray here. So yeah, definitely, these are definitely prototypes, 100%. I do like the swappable headpiece. It looks very, very cool. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really liking the way these are looking. Uh, it's always great to see photographs of these, but in, in to be perfectly honest with you, it's hard to tell 100% exactly what these are going to look like. So, in person is going to be a very, very different thing. Let's keep going. Oh, wow, guys, check it out. It is Steel Heart. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Uh, again, there seems to be minimal paint uh, details on her face. And the ones that are on there, they seem a little bit muddled. Uh, I don't know if it's just the angle of the uh, the figure itself, but the, the eyes don't seem in line for whatever reason. And I know it's a flash photography, so it's really, really blown out on this section. So maybe there are actually more details. We just can't see them, uh, you know, with, with, with the way uh, this particular photo was taken. Anyway, looking at the figure herself, she's looking pretty good, I have to say. Um... Yeah, I don't mind the sculpt itself, looking very, very cool. You can tell that this is still in the style very much of um, 
you know, the Thundercats and, of course, uh, Mask of the Universe, you can still, you know, see pretty much many of the features that, 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 that they've used uh, along those lines. But it's the, it's the details that are in and outside of those that, uh, that really define the characters themselves. I'm really appreciating that ever so much. Again, she's a much darker uh, color than, um, than Quicksilver. She's got that signature blue band on her arm. Uh, I think her chin is just a bit too wide. That's just my opinion uh, personally, but, uh, you know, I guess your mileage may vary, everybody. She does have her um, hawk as well. I'm not sure what the name of this hawk was. Somebody can help me in the comment section below. But he looks pretty good. I love. I do love the two-tone colors with the blues and the, uh, the different metallic uh, grays. Uh, there's her other head sculpt. Honestly, I think it is the Flash. I think that uh, it's blowing up many of the additional colors. You can actually see a few more colors here. She does have uh, slightly rosy lips. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting some um, solicitation photos on these because I think those would be really, really cool. There are her winged arms. And again, it's very interesting to see that uh, how they're sculpted uh, as a full piece together. Very, very cool. And of course, her signature uh, helmet. I do love the way this looks. This is absolutely amazing. Swappable hands and all. All right, guys, let's move on to the next Silverhawk. Wow, this is Monstar. Yes, and honestly, uh, if you guys would want to head over to um, Shuttermas Prime's uh, YouTube, where he has this interview with Brian Flynn, you can see just how big this beast is. He's absolutely massive. Oh my gosh, he's an incredibly huge individual. Like, Quicksilver comes to about here uh, w w compared to Monstar. And Quicksilver is a 7-inch figure. So imagine how much taller this is. Like, he's freaking ginormous. Oh my goodness. I do love the, um, uh, the figure itself. He's looking amazing. It doesn't really have that matte texture. Uh, it's, it's, like, it's like an overly simplified matte. And I'm wondering if that's in response to the way... Uh, the Mass of the Universe figures, right at the end of their line, uh, started getting really, really shiny. I'm wondering if they're trying to, uh, you know, experiment with more of a matte texture, making it look more, uh, you know, cartoon accurate, which is which is kind of interesting. Again, because most of the characters in the show uh, looked very shiny, in my opinion. But anyway, that's not the hero there. Uh, I do love the way uh, he looks, very, very screen accurate, uh, with the with all the spikes. He looks like Pinhead, I swear to God. Uh, love the thrust cannons. Um, you know the, the sorry the um, the elbow the elbow um, thrusters and we can see the the blast effects that are attached there, his overall armor which looks like uh, you know a lion's head, beautiful stuff and of course uh, his his feet, <laughs> everything about Monstar looks crazy. Oh my God, he's absolutely massive! Holy cow, what an individual! I love his uh, his um, uh, rifle there, looking so so much like it did in the cartoon. He's got uh, his his bat familiar. I can't remember his name, guys. I'm really sorry about that. And of course, the monster itself, just crazy, just crazy. Holy crap! Love the blast effects. All these swappable hands. This is a ton of features that come with this particular version of monster. Holy crap, everybody! All right, let's keep going. Buzzsaw, one of my absolute favorite villains in the series, and not just because I had him as a kid, he really was very, very cool. Now, fun fact, uh, in the very first episode of the Silverhawks, Buzzsaw gets blown up. <laughs> I don't know if anybody actually remembers that, but Buzzsaw actually gets blown up in the very first episode of Silverhawks. He really does look very cartoon accurate here. I love the shoulder blades, I love the, uh, the, 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 the Buzzsaw right in the middle of his head. It's too bad that, you know, his jaw doesn't articulate uh, like Toy did, because the toy was really fun. Uh, but, of course, you know, there would be a lot of mechanics involved in that. So, this is just fine. Uh, he's got these massive forearms. And I think he's very similar to the same size as, as um, a Monstar. So, yeah, we, we got some really, really beefy, big characters as enemies for, uh, for um, you know, the, the, the mob. So, very, very cool to see that. Again, hard to tell if there's any paint on this, um, be mainly because the flash is really blowing everything out. But other than that, it looks very, very cool. He comes with that uh, machine gun, which is kind of funny. Uh, I've always wondered how he holds on to that thing. Uh, there's an open articulated mouth. I don't know if the head actually moves up and down. I guess we'll find out when we finally get that. Um, there's another swappable head, which I'm not really sure what the difference is. Uh... Oh, it's the, the blade itself is already spinning. Interesting. Very, very cool. And then we see the um, swappable fists. 
if you can call them fists <laughs> and an actual um some sort of cannon uh which also it, it, obviously this is a very different uh, machine gun cannon but this one actually looks like it replaces his entire arm completely he also comes with one additional attachment which unfortunately is cut off on on this particular picture awesome guys all right and i love the colors because honestly the toy was very much uh in the same vein but it was actually more orange than it was than it was uh uh yellow all right guys let's take a look at the next one wow this is an unpainted uh sample of Windhammer. wow Windhammer was a really cool character honestly um he had this, these long flowing hair you know this demonic looking face um and yeah his overall body type is completely uh, you know, uh, unique. He's got these small shoulders that, that that taper into like huge forearms, and you know his hands are just like absolutely massive. Uh, you know, boxing glove hands. It's just huge. Uh, he's got this wonderful belt as well as the same thing with his legs. They start really really small, but then taper down to these massive calves and huge feet. Yeah, very very interesting designs for for Windhammer. He also has a windswept hair type of look for his swappable face. They swap over the head, sorry. And he's got the uh, the tuning fork uh, electricity, just gorgeous. And he, of course, has his... Um... Oh, actually, that's interesting. Does he come with the... Um, what, what's it called? The uh, animal form of Monstar's pet? That's crazy. We can also see the tuning fork here with some of that uh, electricity um, wind effect. That's, that's, that's actually a signature of Windhammer. I love the details. Uh, you know, look at look, look at the look at the sculpt. I can't wait until we see this guy uh, in his fully painted rendered form. Excellent. Oh my goodness, there he is, Monstar, in his untransformed uh, appearance. Holy crap! I, I do love these. Um, you know, uh, artist proofs. They look incredible. I love the detail, all of the wonderful sculpting. It's very interesting seeing these early prototypes before they actually get painted. Uh, honestly, he's really well put together and much more proportionate compared to, uh, you know, his transformation state. Uh, I'm really appreciating this so much. I do love the way he looks. This is a brand new sculpt entirely. Uh, I don't think this is based on any previous buck. He has, you know, uh, hair flowing out of, uh, I don't, I'm not sure if that's actually his hair or if that's a loincloth. But anyway, it's covering his junk, so who cares? And of course, his everything about these sculpts uh, on, on, the, on the villain's is like practically brand new uh you know his his um his armor just the way he's look my god he looks incredible of course there is the throne which can be uh bought separately the one which actually transforms him into monstar uh and we have two separate head sculpts a screaming head and a more stoic uh well this is the most stoic head here but this one is just a slightly slightly you know conversational head let's put it that way he also has pointing hands, gripping hands, uh, like cl slightly clenched fist, fully clenched fist, and slightly relaxed hands. In freaking sane. And then this, I'm not really familiar with what this is. I'm not even sure if it's facing the right direction, but another wonderful accessory to add to Monstar, untransformed form. Beautiful. Let's take a look at the next figure. Oh, it's Steelwell. Wow. Now, Steelwell looks, uh, he's, he's very much in a prototype state. Uh, there's something going on with his um, football um, mouth guard there. It's it's kind of it's kind of coming off. I think it, I, th I think maybe the hot lights have uh, has sort of like um, deformed it slightly. Uh, but you can still see it is. You can definitely identify this as steel wheel. Huge upper body, huge uh, you know muscles. Uh, that signature, as I said, uh, football like um, swappable head. Uh, yeah, and you know what? These are definitely brand new sculpts. I don't think these are based off of any other uh, figure that's come before, whether it's Thundercats, whether it's uh, you know any other figure in the line. He's he got those huge calves. The way they come down, that one, that's that signature band on both uh, his his right arm and his right leg, um, kind of like a compression compression band or something like that. Very cool. And then of course we do see his uh, hawk. Again, I don't know the names of these hawks. It's unfortunate. It really is. Uh, and the sculpted winged arms. Just beautiful. Oh, my goodness. Uh, there, Steel Will, uh, as, as, without his um, his helmet, he's looking very cool. I do like the smiling face, which is the signature way that Steel Will looks on the series. He's always very jovial, very happy. And he's got a more stoic face right there. Very, very cool. Um, he's got additional accessories here. 
This looks like some one of the, one of the, one of those. Uh, I, don't, I I don't recognize this this accessory at all. It looks like a pair of chomping teeth. What's going on there, guys? That's just weird. And then of course he has a blaster with a blast effect. Crazy. Additional swapped hands, and of course uh, the. Actually, I don't know what those are. What are those things? <laughs> they almost look like shoes. Anyway, he's looking so well put together. I love it, and I can't wait until we see some uh, painted painted samples of this. This is amazing. All right, let's move on to the. Uh, second last figure in the line. Wow, guys. It's Bluegrass. <laughs> One of my favorite characters in the series. Yeah, he's a cowboy. He's a cowboy. Yeah, he's definitely got that cowboy hat. He's got the underneath as a mohawk. Awesome to see that. Exactly the way he looked in the cartoon. Seriously, he's got his uh, fedora. Ascot, if you will, his hanker his handkerchief, his ne his neckerchief, sorry, his neckerchief, and uh, yeah, he's 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 ready he's ready to play some tunes. Uh, yeah, he's got one of the most unique bodies uh, in terms of like um, the overall shape of his uh, of his torso. Yeah, he's very slender, uh, and of course, uh, he's a pilot. He doesn't need to re really go into that much battle, but yeah, he's partly metal, partly real, like the rest of them. He's got these. Um, Wonderful. Uh, they look almost like headphones, which are attached to his to his head for his ears. He's got a wonderful uh, uh, hand, which actually attaches to the hat, so we can actually uh, tip it off his head to like say howdy, howdy, ma'am. And he's also got those wonderful splayed hands. And yeah, he, honestly, I think that he is a completely unique sculpt uh, from the ground up. Incredible. He does have his hot licks uh, bird. Uh, I know that for I, I, I know I know that much, <laughs> and yeah, it's got his it's got uh, you know a fully splayed wings and of course the closed wings, uh, and of course he does have the guitar feature for that along with the blast effects that go along with 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 uh, with that um, you know crazy tune that he used to play to battle Melodia, he's got his two swappable heads with the mohawks, wonderful, so great. And he's even got that lasso to rope in those varmints. Very, very cool. Awesome stuff. All right, guys. Let's take out the last figure. This is a full shot of everything that was at the show. All of these are the prototype versions. We can see Bluegrass at the end there. We see Steel Will and all their additional accessories. Monstar. Oh, that's the bat. Okay, now I, now I recognize it. Now, now I recognize it. And, of course, Windhammer absolutely amazing holy crap everybody what a treat this has been this has been incredible super sevens really brought it uh with monstar and of course the silver hawks incredible we got a quick glance at the gi joe figures in package fully rendered they're looking sweet Again, I really am thinking that the, the, the flash that they were using really blowed out any sort of detail that you could have seen in the faces because they look so flat uh, when it comes down to that. Uh, here we have Duke in, in, in package, and he's looking really, really uh, well put together. I'm hoping that this is a final production sample because that would be awesome, meaning we might actually start getting these in hand uh, sooner rather than later. He's got, these helm he's got his signature helmet, uh, binoculars, all his additional uh, ha swappable hands. He has a, ri a missing rifle. That's interesting. <laughs> One additional rifle and a, a, a radio to, uh, to to communicate with the team, and his backpack with spade uh, built in. Beautiful. It's got the he's got a dog tag there for his uh, you know name, and of course GI Joe. Wonderful. Can't wait until we start getting these guys in hand. We also see, yes indeed, it is Snake Eyes. Cartoon Snake Eyes. These are all based off of the Sunbelt cartoon, so these are wonderful additions to the line. We can see he's got an Aqualung. He has those, um, those uh, radioactive crystals in the jar. He also has the signature Joe Blaster, which is actually the one that's missing out of Duke's packaging. He has additional swapped hands, and of course, his main accessory is Timber. Holy crap, look at the size of that guy. This is literally two figures in one, guys. This is amazing. Uh, there's also a sidearm and another radio. Beautiful. Codename, Snake Eyes, Elite Commando. Incredible. And then finally we see, yes indeed, the Cobra. Battle Android Troopers, the Bats. These are amazing. We already got a sneak peek at these um, during San Diego Comic-Con when they were, uh, you know, they had an exclusive uh, comic book version, comic book code version of the Bats. Uh, here we see the damaged head with sparkling effects. Uh, this is the spark. This is the arm, which can be detached and uh, fixed upon his forearm uh, with sparking effects. We see the damaged arm, the fa damaged forearm. Uh, the bat himself uh, has the fully uh, intact head with the exposed 
chest piece, uh, the grenades on the side, uh, both swappable hands and, and forearms. Uh, yeah, he's looking so well put together. I love all the swappable hands in freaking incredible. Look at those additional um, silver attachments that go into his backpack. Seriously, this is really one wonderful collection. Can't wait until we start getting these guys in hand. Absolutely stunning. All right, guys. So that's part one of the coverage for New York Comic Con. Uh, huge thanks once again to State Overse. Definitely give those guys a like and a follow on YouTube. And a huge shout out to Rob Toys, who also provided many of these images that we saw today. Absolutely excellent. And of course, we have to give a huge shout out to Sylvan, who took many of these photos uh, at the Super 7 booth. Thank you guys for all this wonderful coverage. You guys are doing an amazing work. Wow, guys, that's crazy. So this is going to be the first part in uh, a couple of other sections because there's a lot to reveal here, not just from Super 7, but also from NECA and, of course, Hasbro. A couple of details are coming out of there. Uh, so, guys, I hope you enjoyed this particular look at the Silverhawks releases and a tiny little sneak peek at the G.I. Joe releases as well. Guys, are you in Euro Comic Con? Are you enjoying what's going on over there and seeing some of these great reveals on the show floor? Are you going to be attending any of the wonderful panels that are happening? And you know what? Be first to find out exactly what's coming for 2023. And are you guys going to be trying to grab any of the exclusives that are available at New York Comic Con 2022? Guys, please leave those comments in the comment section below. I hope you're all doing well and staying safe, everybody. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Geek proud. I want to give a huge shout out to all my Patreon and channel member supporters. Thank you so much, everybody. It's thanks to your support that this channel continues to grow. And I really could not have done this without you. You guys are the best. Thank you so much for your support, guys. It really means a lot and really helps the channel to keep growing.